Hello everyone, welcome back to the Roundtable. My name is Tom, and today I want to talk about One Punch Man. Now, to be upfront, I might be what some call Weeb Light, Zero Calorie Weeb, or Weeb LaCroix, where I taste like slightly carbonated water that was within the general vicinity of a Weeb. But there is one anime that I care about that gets me hype like no other, and that is One Punch Man. Ever since seeing the first season of One Punch Man, I've been all about it, and I'm not alone in my love for it. So now that season 2 has started, people are hype, right? Well, actually, there's something that's not quite right that has people feeling some feelings. Season 1 of One Punch Man stood out to me for a number of reasons. The character of Saitama and the way his state of depression was portrayed, along with the humor of watching him navigate hero bureaucracy as an overpowered yet unmotivated godlike force. Not to mention the fact that the writing managed to find a way to make a story about an unbelievably overpowered character genuinely compelling. But one of the most memorable parts of the show was the fact that the animation was absolutely stunning. There are so many battles and moments from season 1 that speak a thousand words without a line of dialogue. However, due to changes in production, season 2 of One Punch Man is not on the same level when it comes to animation. There are still some visually interesting moments and the action is still decent enough to deliver, however, it's just not the action that we've come to expect from One Punch Man, or even most modern anime. And this is just a sad truth that the fans of One Punch Man have to deal with. But unfortunately, I've been seeing a lot of people thinking about giving up on the show for this reason. In fact, I've seen a few figures of prominence sway people towards this impression that this season of One Punch Man just isn't worth the watch. Which I don't agree with, unless you've read the manga and know the story that season 2 will follow, and the only motivation you personally have to watch the anime is to see the story brought to life in a spectacular way like season 1 delivered, in which case, maybe it's not worth your time. But the thing about One Punch Man is it's such a mainstream anime, so a lot of the people who are gonna watch it aren't the type of viewers who read manga. We're talking casual viewers, we're talking the weeb lights, the weeb LaCroix like me. That just ain't my life. We just ain't in it like that. For me personally, I can't read. I know I watch the subs, but like, I can't read, bro. I can't look at pages. I can't read off pages because I never went to school. Dog, I'm a plebeian. I'm weeb LaCroix. I don't watch anime like that, so I'm a lower life form, bro. I don't have a high enough IQ. I try and watch Rick and Morty so I'll be smart enough to watch anime, but it doesn't work, bro. So I just have to casually watch One Punch Man in my underwear at 3 a.m. So for a large chunk of One Punch Man's viewership, there aren't going to be a whole lot of people who have read the manga or have the motivation to even do so. And for those people, Season 2 of One Punch Man is not worth giving up on purely because of the decline in animation quality. Especially when the decline isn't as extreme as people make it out to be. Of course, when something great starts to slip, there will be very hyperbolic statements overstating how extreme the change actually is, and I understand why. I myself had some reservations going into the season, but I am relieved to say that those reservations were overstated. More than anything, the art and animation just feels kinda off and a little underwhelming. It's not like it started looking like the Cleveland show or anything. Who am I kidding? The Cleveland show has god tier animation. And everything else I loved about One Punch Man prior to the sound grade and visuals is still present. The same humor and writing is present, the same character dynamics, and there are even more interesting characters introduced in this season. One example is King. Well, technically King was introduced at the end of season 1, but he didn't do much, and now we know why. King is a hero who is built up as unbelievably strong, someone who has left a path of destruction behind him and can't be stopped, but in reality, he has no power whatsoever. He's just an average guy who wants to sit around and play video games. But the reason that everyone thinks he's so strong is because he's had the fortunate or unfortunate fortunate luck to be there during many of Saitama's key fights. According to King, demon level monsters showed up where he was, and when the dust cleared, he'd be standing there in fear with the monster defeated, which would lead everyone to believe that he was the one pulling off Saitama's unbelievable feats of power. He's similar to Hercule from Dragon Ball Z, except Hercule intentionally lied to everyone to make them believe he was stronger than he actually was. King didn't ask for this position. In fact, he sees it as a curse more than anything. It's something that he was forced into out of confusion and convenience. He's happy to take his pro hero check and live comfortably, but beyond that, he's not really a fan of being in constant danger with no ability to protect himself. But it's heartwarming to see how Saitama befriends King in a very casual way with the two of them bonding over video games and coming to an understanding on the situation they're in with one another, where Saitama has saved King's life many times and due to happenstance, 
and a bit of human nature, King has taken credit for a bulk of Saitama's efforts in monster fighting, but it's all cool between them, as long as King doesn't keep taking all the items. Another interesting character introduced this season is the number one B-class hero, Fubuki. She is the sister of rank 2 S-class hero, Tatsumaki, the same hero who was offended by Saitama's involvement in the season 1 finale because of his ranking. Fubuki uses hazing tactics to keep her number one spot in class B despite the fact that she could pretty easily move up to A, but she stays at the top of B because growing up with her older sister gave her a drive to be number one at something without the confidence to shoot beyond being a big fish in a small pond. I love characters like these because they drive home the idea that the story of One Punch Man is built off of, the idea that these rankings aren't a real reflection of these characters' powers. Even though Fubuki is ranked above Saitama, he's definitely stronger than her, and King who is ranked above both of them is far weaker than both of them. And this comes from the idea that the way that society attributes value to individuals is not an accurate reflection of their value or the work that they've put in. It's easy for the scales to be tipped any which way by corruption, happenstance, formalities, or even just because of a lack of interest in becoming a pro hero. Like Sui Ryu. I, if I butchered that, I'm sorry. But this dude is an amateur martial artist and stronger than most pros, similar to how Saitama was before he became certified, which really takes you back to realize that it's not like Saitama's strength is a secret. He shattered every record on the physical part of the certification exam, and the people running the Heroes Association know what he can do, and I'm sure it's similar for guys like Sui Ryu, who can publicly knock out a Class A hero in one punch. It's like in real life, we have the world's strongest man every year to name the strongest in the world, but it is a strongman competition. Strongman is only one strength sport, and if you take a power lifter like Ray Williams, for example, and he became a strongman, maybe he wouldn't win World's Strongest Man, but I think he could get a podium spot. After training, of course. My point is, is there's always going to be some really strong people who aren't even going to be accounted for. But I digress. Of course, you can't talk about Season 2 without mentioning the new main villain. Garu is certainly antisocial in the literal definition of the word, where it's not too bold to assume this hatred for society and desire to hurt people is a result of a personality disorder disorder. But of course he's not only a villain, he's a villain who aspires to emulate monsters. He grew up looking up to monsters and resenting heroes. To his core, he wants to be a monster who the public and heroes alike fear. Here's the thing though, he's kind of a dweeb from what we've seen so far. Like first of all, and this might be my ignorance speaking, so if I'm wrong correct me, but can't humans become monsters in this universe just by being wildly extreme in some unhealthy manifestation? Like the dude who turned into a crab, he just ate too much crab, or even the boxer guy from a couple episodes ago. I don't fully understand how that works, it's kind of vague, but couldn't Garu just be capable of turning into a literal monster like those other guys? Has he not because our humans that did had something specific about their life that was taken to the extreme, and he doesn't have that? Again, this might be me missing something, which if I am, I can happily own up to that, but what's stopping him from just being a literal monster? Unless that would prevent him from being a demon or god level monster like he wants to be, but it's almost like he's just a dork who wishes he could turn into a monster, but he has no defining characteristics beyond being evil, so he can't. In addition, he has been established as no match for Saitama, because at first there was that question of like, is this a guy who could survive a legit punch from Saitama and pose some real threat for a couple seconds? Or is the one punch rule still applied here? But now it's like, nah, this dude is just an art dork that Saitama can job out with ease. Unless he gets a big power boost, maybe by transforming into a monster? They seem like they're foreshadowing something of him being offered to join the Monsters Association, and maybe it's foreshadowing him turning into a real monster. Which if that happens, I wouldn't know because because LaCroix, no spoilers, I don't read the manga. My point is, this season is not a death sentence for One Punch Man as an anime. In fact, far from it. The story is just as good as it has always been, and unless you purely watched season 1 for the animation, there is no reason to stop now. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. Have you enjoyed season 2 so far? Let me know in the comments down below, or find me at TommyPQM on Twitter and Instagram, or Roundtable Vids on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and share it with your friends. Make sure you're subscribed to the Roundtable and click the bell to never miss a video. If you want to go above and beyond to support the roundtable, you can hit the join button to become a member, pledge to us on Patreon for perks like your name at the end of every video, or check out our Teespring to look like a fashion icon. As always, my name is Tom, and I hope you have an awesome day. See ya!